Hey, welcome to Color Up. Today I'm going to talk about the secrets that the casino does not want you to know about the field bet. I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Ah, the field bet. Some call it a sucker bet, and some say it's fun and they've won a lot of money with it. But does the truth lie somewhere in the middle? I know in my Color Up Club it's a hot topic and we have a lot of fun discussing it. But today, let's take a closer look. First off, it's an easy bet to make and to understand. So whatever the table limit is, let's say it's five or ten dollars, you just take five dollars of your own money, put it in the field in front of you, and your bet's made. If the dice roll any of these numbers that you see here, you win the bet. If it rolls another number that's not shown here on the field, then you lose your bet. Another good thing about the field is it gives you a lot of numbers to win with. So if you make a bet in the field, any of these numbers that roll, you're a winner. Let's say you make a bet on the eight. Well, you have to roll an eight to win. That's the only number that could win for you. There are seven numbers that win the field, the two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, and 12, and only four numbers that lose for the field, the five, six, seven, and eight. Another thing that's good about the field is the house edge, and we'll get into detail a little bit more about that in a minute. But the field bet, is actually better, as far as the house edge goes, better than anything here in the middle of the table. It's better than any of the prop bets. And actually, it's better than placing, making a place bet on the four, five, nine, or 10, which is pretty interesting considering a lot of people make place bets across all the numbers, and the field actually has a lower house edge than some of these bets up here. Something fun about the field bet is if you roll a two or a 12, you typically win double your amount bet. Sometimes you'll even win triple the amount bet. So it looks like there's a lot of numbers that can win with the field, and there are. There are seven numbers, and I mentioned earlier, there are just four numbers that cause the bet to lose. But the trick is, or the secret is, you have to look at the dice combinations. Remember, anytime you roll the dice, there are 36 different combinations that the dice could fall into. This is a four one. That is one combination of the five that can roll. With the two, there's simply one combination that the dice can roll. The three, there are two different combinations that can roll. The four, there are three combinations. The nine, there are four different ways for the dice to roll and make up a nine. The 10, there are also three different combinations. The 11, two combinations. And the 12, one combination. There are 16 out of the 36 possible dice combinations that will cause the field bet to win. So what causes the field bet to lose? The five, six, seven, and eight. Let's take a look at their combinations. There are four ways to roll a five. There are five ways to roll a six. As everyone, or most everyone knows, there are six ways to roll a seven and five ways to roll an eight. There are 20 combinations to lose the field bet versus only 16 combinations that'll win the field bet. So it's pretty deceiving. You see all these winning numbers and you don't realize that there are still more combinations up here because these, these numbers, the five, six, seven, and eight are more likely to roll. Now to make up for this, typically on all the tables, you'll see that the two pays double and the 12 pays double. So you get paid as if there are 18 combinations, even though there are only 16 ways to roll it. So because you get paid, that affects the house edge and with a table that pays double, the house edge is approximately 5.6%. And I'll talk a little bit about house edge here in a second. Now, some tables will actually pay you triple on the 12, or in the case of Northern Nevada, they'll pay you triple on the two. Whenever one of the numbers is paid triple, it lowers the house edge in half. It lowers it down to 2.8%. Because remember, you're getting closer to a decent bet. Even though there are still only 16 ways to roll a field number, you get paid as if there are 19 ways. So you're paid as if there are 19 ways to win and there are 20 ways to lose. Now, every once in a while, you might hear of a casino that pays triple on both the two and 12. In that case, usually it's just a short-lived promotion or something like that. But in that case, there is a 0% house edge. And basically what that means is it's a perfectly fair bet. Now, why is it a fair bet? Because you get paid as if there are 20 combinations to win and there are 20 combinations to lose. But you gotta remember, there still are only 16 ways to roll it, but you get paid as if there are 20. The house edge or casino edge is simply the percentage of the bet that the casino keeps over time. You can consider it 
Um, some people call it a VIG or a commission, but the casino does not pay you fairly in craps. That's how they, that's how they earn their money. So anytime you make a bet, they keep a small percentage of it. That's just the price of doing business with them. So we mentioned the house edge on the field is either 2.8 or 5.6, depending on if they pay double on both numbers or triple on one of the numbers. So what that means is for every $100 bet on the field, 2.8% or $2.80 is going to be collected from the casino. They're not gonna pay that out. They're gonna keep that as a commission for hosting the game. So in the short term, you may hit a bunch of field numbers and walk away with a lot of money, or you may lose all your money, but in the end, it averages out that the casino, they pay out, but they just keep 2.8% or $2.80 per $100 bet. Or if it pays only double on each of the field, then it, they keep a nice 5.6 or $5.60 for every $100 bet. So how does the house edge on the field bet compare to some other bets on the table? I mentioned it's definitely better than anything in the middle here, but let's take a look at the five and nine. The five and nine, the house edge is 4%, meaning every $100 bet, the casino is gonna keep $4. The four and 10, a place bet on the four and 10, the house edge is all the way up at 6.7%. They're gonna keep $6.70. Let's take a look at a bet that pretty much everyone considers a sucker bet, and that's the any craps bet. And it has a house edge over 11%, which means every $100 bet, the casino, they certainly expect to win at least 11 of that $100 back and put it into their pockets. So a lot of these bets here in the middle range between nine, 10, 11, all the way up to 16% house edge. Some pretty poor bets. So you would think, well, the field's not, not too bad at 2.8 or 5.6, you know, 5.6%. It's somewhere in the middle. Obviously, we all know that the don't and the pass are pretty good bets at 1.4%. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's ugly or the biggest secret about the field bet. The ugliest thing about the field bet has got to be the cost per hour. Now, a well-run table, you might see 100 rolls in an hour, 100 rolls of the dice. So let's use that number to figure out the cost per hour there is. There's a simple formula to figure out the cost per hour. It's the amount wagered, in this case we'll say it's $5, times the house edge of 2.8%, so $5 times 0 0.028 times the amount of decisions per hour. Let's take a look at a place bet on the five and nine. I mentioned that it has a house edge of 4%. So let's say we make a $5 place bet on the five. Amount wagered, $5 times the house edge, 0.04, times the amount of decisions per hour. And in this case, for the five and nine, there are 28 decisions per hour. So the math comes out to $5.60. So the casino can expect, because of the house edge, $4 per 100 rolls, or another way they can look at it is, they can expect to win $5.60 per hour from people making bets on the five and nine. So you say, wait a second, I thought there were 100 rolls per hour. There are, there were, are 100 rolls per hour, but for the five and nine, the math works out to only 28 decisions, which means 28 times it's either gonna win or lose. Remember, you have a come out roll to establish the point, whatever it is, and then you know the dice can roll multiple times, it hits other numbers, and then it finally sevens out. Well the math works out to basically 28 times there's gonna be a decision. 28 times either it's gonna roll a five or a seven, and that is considered a decision. The five and nine is a real common place bet, so obviously players are willing to give up $5.60 per hour to play the five and nine. So let's go ahead and look at our sucker bet, the any crafts bet. So usually with a prop bet, you can go with a lower minimum amount. So let's go with a standard $1 bet on a prop bet, so $1 on the any craps. Let's look at our formula. $1 times 11% or 0.11 times 100 rolls or 100 decisions. That comes out to $11 per hour. Now you have to remember, this is a one roll bet. So if there's 100 rolls, there's 100 decisions. So think about that. If you're betting the any craps bet every roll, the casino can expect $11 every hour if you're gonna make that bet. Now, let's take a look at the field bet. Remember, it has a pretty decent house edge 
at 2.8%. Let's say we do, we found a table, maybe it's in downtown Vegas or somewhere that actually pays triple on the 12. So 2.8%. Our minimum bet is typically gonna be $5 times 2.8% or 0 0.028 times 100. Remember, the field bet is also a one roll bet. 100 rolls of the dice in an hour means 100 decisions. So the math works out to $14 per hour that the casino can expect to keep on a field bet that pays triple. Any craps bet they're keeping 11, the field bet they're keeping $14 per hour. Now that's at a casino that pays triple on a number to try and, you know, outdo the competition and bring in more customers. Pretty standard, you'll see that both numbers only play double. And in that case, remember, we're looking at a 5.6% house edge. $5 times 5.6% or 0 0.056 times 100 decisions an hour is 28 dollars per hour that the casino is expecting to keep off a field player. Yikes, and we thought that any craps bet or some of these were sucker bets where they're keeping, you know, $11 or so per hour. The field bet on a standard table, they're going to keep $28 per hour on the field better. The casino loves themselves a good field better. So that's the secret for the casino. A seemingly decent bet becomes a downright ugly bet for the player. Now the secret for the player Use the field sparingly or maybe even not at all. Because remember, this math is kind of based off of you betting every time and seeing 100 decisions in an hour. If you throw it in there every once in a while, you have a gut feeling or something like that, it's not that bad. The house edge is not going to wear you down. But if you're going to consistently play the field, it becomes one of the worst bets on the whole craps table. So I hope you found this information helpful and you'll think twice before you make a field bet, or at least consistently make it a field bet. Now, it is gambling, so you can certainly bet in the field, roll multiple field numbers in a row, maybe even a couple midnights in a row, and really win some money. But remember, long term, the casino is banking on and can count on winning $28 per hour on field betters. And that's just if they're making $5 bets. You increase that bet up to $25 or more, and the casino's take on the bet really skyrockets. So, however you like to bet, whether it's a prop bet, the field bet, or more conservative bets like the line bets or the six and eight, good luck on coloring up.